will give you more information about that and what to do with the handouts and so on. So, uh, for now, God bless you and happy Easter and uh, pray that you, oh, and you also have gotten
Forsake me not, O Lord, my God, be not far from me. Make haste and come to my help, O Lord, my strong salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's great to be with you here in this Lenten season. Got a lot of purple uh, here, reflective of that penitential color. We are making our way here. We're already within the second week, officially, of Lent, as we draw ever closer to the celebration of Palm Sunday, and then entering the Holy Week, ultimately then culminating with the celebration of the Lord's resurrection at Easter, and then kicking off that 50-day liturgical season. Entonces, bienvenidos a todos ustedes, hermanos y hermanas, hermanitos y hermanitas, aquí estamos reunidos en el tiempo de la cuaresma. Estamos ya en la segunda semana. Estamos avanzando poco a poquito, suave, suavecito, hacia la celebración de la resurrección de Jesús en la Pascua. Entonces, uh, estamos bien bendecidos por tener la oportunidad, por tener la misa aquí, por acompañarnos y pedir por el auxilio de Dios en nuestro compromiso por el mal. At the beginning of this Mass, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you lead us in the way of salvation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Oremos. Keep your family, O Lord, schooled always in good works. So comfort them with your protection here as to lead them graciously to gifts on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated with us at our safe for the liturgy of the Holy Grail as we listen to God's holy word. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem said, Come, let us contrive a plot against Jeremiah. It will not mean the loss of instruction from the priests, nor of counsel from the wise, nor of messages from the prophets. And so, let us destroy him by his own tongue. Let us carefully note his every word. Heed me, O Lord, and listen to what my adversaries say. Must good be repaid with evil, that they should dig a pit to take my life? Remember that I stood before you to speak in their behalf, to turn away your wrath from them. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Save, Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. You will free me from the snare they set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. I hear the whispers of the crowd that frighten me from every side as they consult together against me, plotting to take my life. Save me, O oh Lord, in your kindness. But my trust is in you, O oh Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Save me, O oh Lord, Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise, Praise and Lord. honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy 
Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside by themselves and said to them on the way, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked, scourged, and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They said to him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wait in Siddhartha, maybe see. Pues para el salmo responsorial hoy mismo, estuvimos diciendo al Señor con el salmista, Sálvame, Señor, en tu bondad. Es un dicho, una declaración de confianza, que Dios es confiable y Él quiere ayudar y acompañar a nosotros en medio de todas las luchas, las dificultades de la vida que está presente con nosotros para sufrir con nosotros. Tenemos su ejemplo allá, Jesús mismo en el Evangelio. Él estuvo predicando y hablando lo de su pasión, su crucifixión, pero también de su resurrección. Entonces nosotros vamos a pasar en esta vida aquí en la tierra con los dolores y los sufrimientos, con las tribulaciones, las pruebas, pero nosotros podemos confiar en la misericordia de Dios. So we heard there within a responsorial song that Mary was proclaiming this evening, and we were saying, save me, Lord, in your kindness. And we were saying that not merely just imploring God for his goodness and mercy, but it was one made out of great faith with hopeful confidence that God indeed does want to help us. He's one who sent his only begotten son indeed to suffer for us and suffer with us here on earth. Within the gospel, we heard Jesus talking with his friends, the disciples, in anticipation of his own suffering, death, and ultimately his resurrection. And so we ourselves, we're going to go through these Lenten days, these days of intense purification and preparation for Easter. And at times, we're going to suffer. We're going to suffer denying ourselves for that extra cookie that we say no. This year, this time, I'm going to say no. Not because a cookie in and of itself is a bad thing, uh, but because we want to focus our hearts, our lives, on the sweetness of the Lord. So we ourselves, we ask for God's grace and strength to save us in his kindness, to help us that we ourselves can support one another on this journey as well. Entonces nosotros pedimos por la dulzura del Señor para ayudar a nosotros a vivir con corazones tiernos para ayudar a los demás también en su tiempo de necesidad para que algún día después de los sufrimientos y las pruebas de aquí en la tierra nosotros podamos estar ya reunidos con el sol en el cielo para vivir y glorificarlo por siglo de los siglos. ourselves, even with the sufferings and the cross that we carry, we would trust that the 
the Lord Jesus wants to save us in his kindness, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Pedimos al Señor por la paz y la justicia en nuestros corazones, en nuestros hogares, en la comunidad de la fe aquí en la Inmaculada Concepción, en los Estados Unidos, en todos los países del mundo, proguemos al Señor. Te lo pedimos, Señor. We pray for all those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, those who have problems, misunderstandings, divisions within their families, that there would be greater peace and reconciliation brought about by Christ. We pray to the Lord. Pedimos por todos nuestros queridos hermanos y hermanas que han fallecido, que ellos pueden descansar en la paz y la gloria de Dios en el cielo. Roguemos al Señor. Te lo pedimos, Señor. We pray for all of those intentions that you bring before Jesus this evening. We pray to the Lord. Dios Padre bondadoso, te damos gracias por tu presencia con nosotros en estos días cuaresmales. Ayúdanos a perseverar, a fijar nuestros ojos en Jesús, el que supió por nosotros, y con la fuerza del Espíritu Santo, con el fuego de su iluminación, podamos estar unidos y algún día llegar en tu reino, donde vives y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. After each prayer, we'll say, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. The fruit of the earth and the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. The fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Please support the Lord, I I invite you to please stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, on the sacrificial gifts we offer you. And by this holy exchange, undo the bonds of our sins through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. So with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For more de rodillas, you should have pleased me. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. When about to give his life to set us free, he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a sense,
similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Werner, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity, the new heaven and new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand for Corde Pia. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Peace, the boss. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios, que quitas el pecado del mundo, danos la paz. I you to please kneel. We didn't start the rodillas.
Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Just as we've done in the last several months, uh, Mary Naraki and I will be going individually to where you are within your pews. You'll be receiving Holy Communion. Um, just ask you to extend your hands from where you're at. Otherwise, if you'll be receiving a blessing, you can cross your arms over you. Entonces, como hemos dicho, para la Santa Comunión puede quedarse donde están allá en sus bancas. Y la señora Mary Naraki y yo vamos directamente donde ustedes están. Y pueden extenderse las manos y van a comulgar. Si no, pueden cruzar los brazos para recibir la bendición. Todos estamos unidos aquí para pedir por el auxilio de Dios en nuestras vidas para servir a Él y a los demás.
Let us pray. Oremos. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that what you have given us as a pledge of immortality may work for our eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Great to pray with all of you this evening. Hopefully you have a great rest of this week and a wonderful ongoing journey of Lent. Um, Ms. Naraki might have already invited, but uh, there will be Stations of the Cross this Friday at 2 p.m. as well as at 7 p.m., which is going to be led by Faith Formation. So great opportunity in the Lenten season to reflect upon that crucified love of Jesus, but also calling to mind his resurrected love for us as well. Entonces, uh, vamos a tener Via Crucis el viernes a las 2 p.m. Aquí en la iglesia y también a las 7 p.m. con el grupo de catequesis o la formación de la fe. Están bienvenidos para contemplar y pensar en el amor crucificado y luego resucitado de Jesús para cada uno de nosotros. As well, we also have the presentation from Sofía, uh, formerly Naraki, who, <laughs> after uh, Mass this evening, um, they're invited uh, for those who will stay for that. Otherwise, those who will go with Mary, Naraki, uh, down the fellowship hall. Entonces, pueden quedarse los que van a quedar para la presentación. Si no pueden irse con Mary Naraki this way. The Lord be with you. Pueden inclinarse por la bendición. Bow down for God's blessing. Bestow upon your servants, Lord, abundance of grace and protection. Grant health of mind and body. Grant fullness of fraternal charity. Make them always devoted to you through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. making it a point, I think, for much of the Mass to ask for the prayers of our Blessed Mother. Donde vamos a pedir por la intercesión de nuestra Madre María Santísima, con un Dios de Salve María. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. español no es tan bueno como ella, <laughs> la de ella. Um, las páginas que Gabe y Verónica están pasando tienen más o menos lo que voy a decir esta noche, um, pero no voy, no voy a leer exactamente, pero más o menos. Por eso ustedes tienen todas las respuestas que necesitan para la última página, para hacer la última página. Um, hi everybody, my name is Sophia. Um, I will be talking about the Ten Commandments today and a little bit of the history leading up to the Ten Commandments. 
Um, we're going to try to make it as interactive as possible, which I think we all know is a little bit difficult. If you've been a student in my class, or if I've subbed your class today, you know, you know that it, I, I need to have people talking. It's a little bit hard with masks. It's a little bit hard with people spread out. Um, so I might do a little bit more talking tonight than I would normally like to. But the good news is, if I ask a question and you know the answer, feel free to yell it out. I mean, you don't often get to be told you can yell in church or be loud in church, but you can tonight. So feel free. Um, so first of all, we're going to talk about the Ten Commandments. And I think many of you, if not all of you, have heard about the Ten Commandments. But not everybody can say them all. And I'm not going to put you on the spot. But um, is there anybody who thinks they can name any of the Ten Commandments? Besides my dad. Besides an adult. Besides an adult. Any kids? Can you name one, do you think? Sin. If we, if we follow the Ten Commandments, it keeps us from sin. It's usually a lot of hard, don't do this, don't do that. And I apologize if you say something and I mishear you, it's the masks. We'll just blame it on COVID. <laughs> all right, well, we're going to cover all of them. So you're going to get, the, you have the sheets so you can see when you get there. Um, but before we talk about the Ten Commandments, we're going to talk a little bit, like I said, of the history leading up to it. Um, when you think of the Ten Commandments, there's usually one person in the Bible that's most closely associated with the Ten Commandments. There's a movie, there's at least one pretty famous movie. Anybody think they know the person that when we talk about the Ten Commandments, who might you think of? Really loudly, I promise you can yell and I won't get mad. Let's see if, if I had a free microphone, I'd like to run. Mo oh, I heard Moses, Moses, yes. Many of you may be thinking about Moses. We're going to take it back like 400 years before Moses, okay? We'll get to Moses, but before that, um, there was a man named Jacob. And... God changed Jacob's name to Israel. You may have heard the word Israel before. It's a country. That all comes from Jacob. So Jacob had 12 sons. One son was named Joseph. This is one of my favorite Bible stories in the entire Bible. We're not going to get to it tonight, but it's a good one. You should read it. Joseph went to Egypt he became a very important man in Egypt during a time of famine. Does anybody, I, you know what, I'm not even going to ask you to shout it out because it's just not working, okay? Um, a famine is when people are starving. There isn't enough food, there's a drought, they can't provide enough food for the people. So there was a famine in the land, and Joseph, because he was such an important person, he knew they kind of, Egypt had planned ahead, they had a lot of extra food, Joseph brought his 12 brothers and his dad, Jacob, to Egypt, where they had enough food, so he was able to provide for them. They lived in Egypt. Um, Jacob's family, because there were 12 kids, that's a lot of kids, they had kids, and those kids had kids. And the Israelites, so Jacob's descendants became known as the Israelites, those Israelites began to multiply. And eventually the Egyptians got a little bit nervous. And they were a little worried that the Israelites would take over. So they decided, we're going to make them slaves. That's the only way we can keep them, things from getting out of hand. Okay, We're going we're gonna to make them our slaves. 400 years later, the Israelites, who were also known as the Hebrews, were still slaves. But God sent them a leader named Moses. This is where Moses comes into the story. Um, this is also another wonderful story in the Bible. 
So we're only going to do just, we're scratching the surface. So you guys can go home and read it because there's a lot more to the story. And again, check out the movie Charlton Heston. It's a good one. One day Moses saw a burning bush and he heard the voice of God saying, Moses, Moses. So imagine you're walking down the street and you see a burning bush. And it's not like disintegrating, like something that's really on fire. It's just kind of lit up like it's on fire. And you hear God telling you, calling your name. You're probably going to stop what you're doing and listen. Moses did. Smart guy. God told him to go and tell the Pharaoh, who was the king, the leader of Egypt, to let his people go. God did not want those Hebrews, those Israelites, to be slaves anymore. So he sent Moses to tell Pharaoh to kind of give Pharaoh some lessons to kind of persuade him and um, trying to get the Hebrew people set free. Moses went to Pharaoh and Pharaoh was stubborn. Imagine that, he didn't do exactly as he was supposed to the first time around. So God sent 10 plagues to Egypt. Anybody wanna to try to tell me what a plague is? Is a plague good or is it bad? Yeah, we don't want plagues. COVID might be considered a plague, not fun. Um, a plague is a terrible disaster. And God, Pharaoh kept saying no over and over and over again. So God, through like with the, Moses' help, sent 10 plagues to the people of Egypt. We're not gonna name all of them, but it included frogs and lice and gnats. I mean, you've been outside in the summer when gnats are just kind of buzzing around and they're annoying. Now imagine like all over the place and they're in your ear and your hair and your nose and everything. Um, it was like that. He sent it to kind of punish Pharaoh to get his attention. Uh, hail, locusts, all, all this stuff. The li livestock died. I mean, just some really not great stuff. The 10th plague was so bad that Pharaoh finally told Moses, I'm done. Take your people and leave at once, get out of here. So the Hebrew families had a special meal called the Passover meal. And if you have any friends or relatives who are Jewish, you may have heard, or maybe not, maybe you've also just heard of Passover, it usually happens around Easter. And they had a special Passover meal, and when Moses gave that word after the Passover meal, Hebrews were allowed to leave Egypt. They were allowed to escape, or another word is exodus. So the Hebrews escaped Pharaoh. They escaped Egypt. They traveled through the desert. When they needed food and water, God gave them manna, which is a bread that they found in the desert every morning. God was very good about providing for these people that he had set free from Egypt. They're wandering through the desert at night, he made sure, because they're wandering, they didn't know where they were going. At night, he would put a pillar of fire, and he just said, follow that. They just had to keep walking towards that. During the day, they had a pillar of smoke, like a big cloud. So not only did God provide them water and food in the middle of nowhere, he showed them where to go. They finally made it to the wilderness of Sinai, and God called Moses up to the top of Mount Sinai. He made this promise. If you listen to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my special possession, dearer to me than all other people, through all, though all the earth is mine. You shall be to me the kingdom of priests, a holy nation. This is what he is saying to the, to the um, Israelites. Then God spoke the Ten Commandments of the Covenant, this promise, telling the Israelites to obey the commandments exactly as prescribed, and they could live and prosper and have a long life in the land of Canaan, which was where they were going. That was their destination. There was a lot of fighting and stealing and angry words among the Israelites. So the Israelites are human. Humans are flawed. Humans make mistakes. The Israelites were far from perfect. I mean, they had God literally dropping bread out of heaven for them, giving them water in the desert, leading them with miraculous things to where they were supposed to be. And half the time they're wandering around saying, where's God? Why are we here? Why is he doing this to us? So they were grumbling, they were complaining. They were not perfect people. They seem to have forgotten God. And in order for them 
to experience the fullness of God's blessings, they were supposed to follow his commandments. Remember that God chose the people of Israel for himself. He loved them and cared for them and formed them into the group in which Jesus would someday be born. So the Israelites, remember starting back with Jacob, these were the people, these were the ancestors of Jesus. So they were a holy people. The commandments were rules about how the Israelites were to love and to serve God. They were also a sign that God would care for his people. He would be their friend. This is why the Ten Commandments are also called a covenant. The Israelites didn't know it yet, but the covenant, the commandments were the first stage of God's law that would one day be made perfect by the love of Jesus and written on their hearts with love by the Holy Spirit. We still need the commandments today, and we, when we obey God's rules, we will be close to God and show that we love him. We'll be acting like one of his people. The commandments are our, God, our guide for how to live our lives in a way that we show, so that we show God our love for him and for others. Not only should we use the commandments to help us as a guide for how to live our lives, we should also use them as an, exam an examination of conscience before reconciliation. So for those of you who have had first reconciliation, you might be going, um, they're kind of a good little checklist to go through before you go to reconciliation. And we're, we're going to take a look at the Ten Commandments now. And one thing to note is that when you look at them kind of as they're written in the Bible, uh, it might be hard to really recognize how, how we can follow them today, how we can follow them, especially if you're a kid. Some of them might be like, well, I, you know, I'm not going to do this, or this doesn't apply to me. So we're, as we go through them, we're going to kind of think about Simple ways to remember them, and other kind of versions, not versions of them, but different ways to think about them so they, they do apply to you. So let's take a look at the first one. I am your God, you shall not have other gods before me. Okay, so simplify. Put God first. Uh, other ways that you can do this, if you're, especially if you're for reconciliation, you can think, okay, yeah, God, God's first, but maybe, you know, do you trust God? Are there times maybe you're not as trusting of God as you should be? Um, do you love God above all things? Do you have regular prayer time that puts God above all, above everything else? Second commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Respect God's name. Okay, just another easy way to remember it. And this one's kind of hard for a lot of people nowadays. I mean, people use the name of God in vain frequently, left and right. Um, and God asks us not to do that. He asks us to recognize that his name is special and to remember that. So, you know, things that you can think about. Only say God's name with love. Don't use God's name when you're angry. Don't curse others. Um, protect the Lord's name. Third commandment, remember to keep holy the Lord's day. Respect God's day of rest. A simple way to think of it. That's it. things like attending Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation. And, and again, I'm guilty of this too, not just coming to Mass and sitting there, but participating and listening and trying to focus even when it's hard. Okay, Not just showing up, but actually doing it. Um, trying to be there for the whole Mass. I mean, sometimes it's, you know, you're running in, and again, guilty, running in late, maybe sneaking out early, trying to be there and be present for the whole time. Uh, avoid shopping on Sundays. So these are all things, again, back, back in the day, people didn't shop on Sundays. Now people do, and that's a way that we can kind of learn to respect God's day of rest is by keeping it a day of family, staying close to home. Fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. Respect your parents. This is my favorite one. Just kidding. It's one of my favorite ones. Talk with respect when you're speaking with your parents. Do kind and loving acts for your parents. Only say good things about your parents. You would never say, you would never talk crabbily about your parents. 
Pray for your parents. Obey your parents. Help your parents and be cheerful and uncomplaining about things you're asked to do. Mm. Um, and this also goes for authority, you know? Respect authority figures. Fifth commandment, you shall not kill. All right, so this is one of those that I was talking about, and you're, you know, probably thinking, well, yeah, I'm not a murderer. Easy, I got this one. Um, this also includes things like respecting all life and don't wish harm on others. God asks us to take care of ourselves. Don't, you know, take care of the health of your body. You know, it doesn't have to be the actual physical act of killing, but protecting, protecting life. If praying, attending mass, receiving sacraments often, those are also taking care of our souls. Sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Respecting marriage. And again, as a kid, you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, I'm not married. Like, what, what am I supposed to do with this? Um, this could include making sure that what you're watching and things that you're listening to are appropriate. Dressing modestly. Avoid telling or listening to impure jokes. And not making fun of your body or the bodies of, of other people. Seventh commandment, you shall not steal. Easy, don't steal, right? Um, again, this is a pretty understandable one, but it can also include things like returning what you borrow, using other people's things carefully. Um, if you break something, fix it or, you know, replace it. Not cheating, playing fairly. Eighth commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Simplified, don't lie. Be honest in what you do. Um, be someone that people can trust. Always speak the truth about others. Ninth commandment and tenth commandment kind of go hand in hand. The ninth commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And the tenth commandment, you shall not covet, covet your neighbor's good. If you want to put them together, simplified, don't be jealous, okay? God has given different people different things, and you want to respect what he's given others, and you want to be grateful for what you have without thinking, oh, I wish I had that. Work hard for what you want. Work hard for what you have, and respect whether, what others have. Use other people's things with care. So those are all kind of ways that you can take these these ten commandments which sometimes seem kind of big and out there and just apply them more to your life on a daily basis so we can use our hands for this you don't even have to use your voices how many commandments are there hands up people get them up I just went over them. ten very good how many plagues were there All right, nice and loud. What was, what did God change Jacob's name to? And last question of my super duper short talk quiz. What country did the Israelites leave with Moses and God's help? Egypt. Egypt. That's all I got for you guys. Take home your papers. Um, fill out your, the pages, the last page, and bring it to your next class. And when you leave, we'll say a quick, we'll say a quick glory be before we leave, but when you leave, please make sure to do the social distancing and don't just all run out and walk, okay? All right, we'll finish with the glory be. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall.